Hello, I'm Anna Karugati, the Group Editorial Director of World Screen. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with me. I saw the Hi. series. I am speechless in a very good way. Uh, I would like to start with what appeals to you about the project? Uh, what grabbed me was just the character of Eli and what Hugo had written about him was, you know, for a part like that, you know, it's, it's a gift for an actor to play anything like that. And just the story of uh, Eli and Cornelia in the relationship and how it, you know, went on the adventure and the intertwined with the other stories. Yeah. He does a really amazing job. It brings you into that world. I mean, I was equally kidnapped by it and by her specifically. She was such an endlessly surprising character. I love that within the Western genre, you've got the damsel not in distress, you know, for the first time. She's sort of on this revenge kick that was so tenacious and so powerful. And yet she's innocent and she's hopeful and yet she's sort of fearless. And so I just was gripped by her and I'd always wanted to do a Western. For how long had you been thinking of telling this story? I understand that you actually lived out West when you were younger. Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. I mean, as I, how long have I been thinking? I've been thinking about it since I first sat on my grandparents' Orange City couch and watched Anthony Mann pictures as a four-year-old, I would imagine. So you know what? Uh, forever. Uh, um, uh, uh, and... And yes, it's true. When I was a young man, I was I was sent out to Montana and uh, kind of to straighten me out, as you know, it's a good idea for young men to do. And uh, I got the last little, you know, it's like the disappearing dust of the old West in 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 the rearview mirror of my uh, teenage years. And I saw nothing, you know, loads of positives and a few kind of negatives about what that meant. And I certainly knew I wanted to take a pic, you know, tell a picture, t tell a story about it. Um, but I percolated. I just waited, waited a, a good long while. And I'm glad I did. I, I think uh, the Western is just the purest form of en endeavor. I think it was Jimmy Stewart that said that. But it's also logistically quite demanding, you know, literally, because you're in the middle of nowhere with a couple of hundred people and a bunch of horses. And, you know, you, you got to be pretty confident on what you want to do with them. So um, all of that came at the right time. Uh, but it's something I've always wanted to do. Excellent. Now, why is this an important story to tell today? And what themes are relevant to today's audience? I think there are a lot of themes for people to relate to. I mean, we're in uncertain times right now. This is a tumultuous world that we're in. And the Western is that, but in a kind of boiling pot. And the Western's landscape is a violent one. It's a bloody one. And uh, the themes of loss and race and power and revenge and a restoration of justice. I think people are all feeling those in their own way. There's a lot to identify with. Um, it's just that the Western gives you that in an elevated cinematic sense. Exact same thing she said. Um, also, I think the audience is going to be really intrigued by, by the chemistry between the two characters. And I think I think that's going to be the journey. That's that's the uh, the center of it of the of the English is those two characters, Cornelia and Eli. And I think uh, the audience is going to really be captivated by them and uh, want to know more. And I think they'll go along for the ride. I've seen um, some of your previous work, uh, The Honorable Woman or Black Earth Rising. Both were infused with a lot of research. What mm -hmm. research did you do to prepare for writing the English? It's True. Yes, exactly that. Uh, I have an interest in research. Uh, it, it, it pleases me to, to uh, take a project on that requires it. This, you know, it's an exercise in exploration of the genre. First and foremost, it's about uh, an adventure. That's these things are. But it does touch on certain themes, particularly, I think, on native representation. I, I think I noticed, though I love the genre, you know, uh, beyond no other, you know, um, uh, I sort of maybe its history of representation is is patchy to say the least, and and then, in so much as the genre required it, but it did require it, because Chaskay Spencer's role as a Pawnee scout needed to have specificity and accuracy attached to whatever it is that he was speaking to. I then researched it individually for myself, and it's kind of like sort of Smithsonian levels of it really, and then once those scripts were 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 ready and robust, <clears throat> excuse me, I then 
pass that to um, uh, Crystal Echohort, who is CEO of uh, uh, Illuminative, which is a native-led representation organization, who then engaged in the scripts very positively, and we had great conversations. And then she passed those over to a team of, of Pawnee Nation advisors who then came with me on a granular level. I mean, it's almost two years of work, I realized that they were involved, um, where we just went through any level of specificity of Pawnee representation. And I was so amazed and, and educated by that journey we all took. It was amazing. Now, you portray um, such a broad range of emotions uh, as an actor. That's fun. That's challenging. Um, it, it, uh, were those roles that you appreciated being able to play? Yeah. I mean, when you get to run the whole gauntlet of trying to discover whatever tricks you might have in your bag, you know, as an actor, <laughs> it's really exciting and it stretches you and it challenges you and you have to go to places that aren't always pleasant and you have to embody experiences that you've never been through or you can't imagine going through or you're horrified about, you know, horrified by yourself. It was certainly a project that kept us up at night. It was the one that, I mean, the next day, if we'd done a really dramatic scene, we'd come in and neither Chasky and I had really slept, you know, because you're just up kind of humming with the whole thing. And, um, yeah, it was an all-consuming world for us both, and it required all of us. Yeah. It, requ it was These were the roles that require all of you, and you, you, you wait for those roles. Like, mm. they are very rare. They're mm. so rare. So we were both sort of honored to get the chance. Now, you are also an actor, besides being a director and a writer. That knowledge of the actor's craft, um, that helps you in dealing with the actors? It when you direct? I mean, for, for, it wasn't my ambition to, to act, but I was fortunate enough to start off in, in and I, I shot Batman's parents in Tim Burton's Batman all, so all those years ago. And I think what you can learn from it is to sort of think quick, but sit still and don't blink. And uh, in that way, very essential. I think it was Michael Caine that sorted that one out. I think it's a way by which cinematic acting can be best expressed. Quite calm, quite focused. Just let the, you almost become transparent as a performer and allow the character to come through. And that works well for at least for the work that I make. Right. And and you allow, um, uh, do, do you give your actors some freedom and some... Uh, it's some... really interesting, actually. They would be best to answer your question. But I have a sense that they, they feel very liberated, which they were surprised by. As a writer-director, you might think that someone grips hold of it very hard. I, I don't uh, do that. Uh, in fact, I have amnesia with my scripts. I can't remember what I've done when I've written them. And when I go on to the floor, I think there's a little bit of deliberacy in this. I, I wait to be delighted, but, but surprised by the looseness of the presentation. And I, I tend to try and do it very quick. It's three takes and we move on. So I, I, I don't really hold tight stuff. I'm very excited to see what the performance will bring. I've worked with a few actor directors before and they're always uh, they always um, are more are more better to communicate with actors. And working with Hugo, oh, it was a godsend. It was really was a beautiful experience, and I was I'm I'm still blown away by working with him because you know when you when you're doing a film like this, you know you have to get very intimate and you have to go places you know where you sometimes you don't want to go. And it's nice to have someone support and also just to make sure you're going to be okay. And you knew he was, he's an actor, so he knows where we're going and how we're doing this. And he knows when to back off, when to come in. And he was very, I don't know, I've never worked with anyone like him before. So mm -hmm. he's just, he's just a freak genius. He's a freak genius. <laughs> he's a freak genius. He's a freak uh -huh. genius, he really is. Oh, one story was that uh, one time we were filming and we could see him edit, like right in his head. He gets the shot and he, we're moving on. And, yeah. and we'd watch him like, <laughs> Watch him, watch him, watch him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's fun to watch direct as well. He's so animated. And he's also, for a writer-director, he doesn't hold too tightly to the material. He's sort yeah. of curious to see what you'll do with it. And it's wonderfully freeing working with him. He was so excited by what you might do. He doesn't straightjacket you in any way. Speaking as a viewer, not as, a, as an actor, but it seems to me as though a lot of the communication was nonverbal. Did I get that right? I mean, you, yeah. Yeah. both of you communicated so much with a look, with a glance. Mm -hmm. Is that, is it more difficult to communicate that way than with dialogue? No, no. it's wonderful. Actually, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, 
actually think it's easier to stay silent and convey emotions through mm. eyes and mannerisms than it is for dialogue. It's, it's Certainly when the scenes have such potency yeah. to them and the scenes, there's so much going on between them. that I think we always loved what they withhold from each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the space between them is so sparkly um, because of the secrets they hold, because of mm. the gentle sort of, you know, easing of their, um, you know, uh, warmth as it grows between them. I think it was just like that slow burn thing was really wonderful to play. And he's definitely a man of few words in it. And she's an oversharer, mm -hmm. you know, so you've got this great <laughs> chemistry of like two very different ways that, that um, sort of meet head on. And it's quite a delight to watch them yeah. together as characters. I've been asked, you know, what was my favorite scenes? And, you know, the favorite scenes, are, you know, obviously the logistics, the shootouts, the horse riding, but actually my favorite scenes are between the two of them, the tiny, intimate moments between the two of them. And that's because when I saw it, they were, we were over and done in a few, few takes, and, and it was almost like I just watched it. If my job was just to put the camera in the place and get out of the way and let them do the rest, and it was a joy to witness. I mean, honestly, everyone always says that, but I tell you on this occasion, it's true. Exactly. Now, I would imagine that um, you were presented with some challenges. Uh, I understand the, the weather was rather... <laughs> you know, I, 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 I have heard now that poor Emily in one of those corsets, you know, as she lived, and, and Chaska in one of those heavy uh, shell uh, jackets he had to wear. You know, uh, Emily particularly, I think, had her organs cooked like a microwave in uh, 40 degree heat. But I have to say, I have heard that, you know, some uh, directors who involved themselves in Westerns were either allergic to horses or hated dust. Um, you know, hats off to them, because frankly, that's all you're ever going to get. And I love both of them. So maybe I'm just, you know, punishment orientated, but the whole thing to me was a joy. <laughs> You mentioned horses, I wonder. I mean, you can get an actor to do what you want, but how do you get a horse to do what well, you need to do? It's true, actually. I mean, you know, let me whisper you a little truth. It's that sometimes the horses know better than the actors what is wanted, you know? Uh, and so we had a marvelous horse master, a literal horse whisperer, and a man called Hernan Ortez. And he is, you know, of world renown in, 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 in that regard, in that industry, part of the industry. And we were incredibly lucky to have him. He could whisper a horse to do whatever it was was required by the uh, production. And it's odd because horses are quite skittish and they're actually quite nervous. They're quite nervy things. They move around and they're kind of watching you all the time. So having him and having that orientation just made the whole thing settle. And in fact, we ran our production at the rhythm of the horse. Now, Emily, am, am I correct? You also have an executive producer um, title on this. Um, what added responsibilities be, besides the acting, which I'm sure was huge? I mean, to be honest, I feel as I've gone along my career, I've been sort of brought further and further into the creative nucleus of every show or every film I've been on. And I'll do the work regardless of whether you want to give me a title for it or not. Um, I'm not just interested in the acting side of things. I adore it and I love it. And that is in itself my responsibility when we're shooting. But the preamble and the aftermath are also really exciting to me, like building a story and, and working on these scripts and developing stuff. And then the post and the edit and well, I love it all. So um, I would say the responsibility was greater, but but not unwelcomed. I mean, definitely something I, I love very much. Fabulous. I'm afraid our time is up, but I have to say, like a good novel, this series stayed with me for several days after I watched it. Thank and you. Uh, thank it, you. wow. So thank, thank you for thank giving you so that good. to me. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks for the response. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.